in, the le in this last video, I'd like to uh, make some remarks on uh, good basis states and what they mean for degenerate perturbation theory. So as I mentioned in previous videos, the goal of degenerate perturbation theory is to find uh, a set of states which diagonalize our perturbation matrix. And the difficulty in degenerate perturbation theory is that we don't know ahead of time what this set of states are. Uh, but if we could know, or if we had uh, a basis in which delta H is diagonal right from the start, so at the beginning we already know what this set of states are, then our our problem is is uh, greatly simplified. So for delta H to be diagonal, this means that the matrix elements delta H kn are equal to zero when L is not equal to k. So this is the same thing as saying off diagonal elements are zero. Uh, when this happens, our results from the general perturbation theory actually converge, uh, our results from the general perturbation theory actually converge to those of non-degenerate perturbation theory. So in that case, degenerate perturbation theory gives the same results as non-degenerate perturbation theory, meaning that the first order energy corrections, I would say to state one, will be given by the diagonal, uh, the first diagonal element of our perturbation matrix. And for some state two, uh, so here, let's say our basis vectors are one and two, unperturbed. Okay, so these would be our results from degenerate perturbation theory, and these are exactly the same results that we find for non-degenerate perturbation theory. The reason this works out uh, is because of a small loophole in our expression for the first order correction. So this is in non-degenerate perturbation theory. The correction for the first, uh, the first order correction to the state is given by delta H K N minus the difference in the unperturbed energies summed over all of the states. And when delta H is already diagonal, so when this is equal to zero, or when K is not equal to, to N, so this should be uh, KL, which is what we're summing over, then if the denominator is zero, because we have degeneracies, in this particular case where Delta H is already diagonalized, the numerator is also zero. So while the this expression doesn't give you anything useful, it does, it is still valid because it doesn't give you any divergences. This is zero. Uh, sorry, the that uh, should be is not infinity when delta H kn is equal to zero. And you have a degeneracy between state n and state k. Okay, so this is a small loophole that we can take advantage of. And what we would need then is a recipe to know what 
these good states are right from the beginning. And there is actually a general rule that allows us to find such states. So the rule is as follows. If our unperturbed Hamiltonian has degenerate eigenstates, which will denote by n not p and n not q, with uh, degenerate energies, so e and p is equal to e and q is equal to e n. And if a hat is a Hermitian operator, so it corresponds to some physical observable, it could be the angular momentum operator, it could be momentum operator. If we can find a Hermitian operator which commutes which with both the unperturbed Hamiltonian and the perturbation. So that means that the commutator between H hat not and A hat is equal to zero. And the commutator between delta H hat and A hat is also equal to zero. Uh, as well as A hat having the same eigenstates as the unperturbed Hamiltonian but with distinct eigenvalues. So these eigenstates are not degenerate with respect to this new operator. So it has distinct eigenvalues EP and EQ. So they're, they're not equal. What this means then is uh, if this Hermitian operator commutes with both delta H and H and also satisfies this condition. So it has the same eigenstates as H hat, but now with distinct eigenvalues, then these unperturbed states that we started with in our original Hamiltonian will form a good basis set. So they will form a basis set in which delta H is already diagonalized. And uh, as we said before, what this means is that we can use the result of non-degenerate perturbation theory to find the first order corrections to the energies of the de de degenerate eigenstates. So what this means is if you're faced with a problem of finding the first order energy corrections of a degenerate state, you should look for a Hermitian operator which commutes with both H hat, H hat not, the unperturbed Hamiltonian, and delta H, the perturbation, uh, and has the same eigenstates as H had not, you can use the first order energy correction from non-degenerate perturbation theory. And the general uh, guiding idea behind looking for such a, an operator is to look at the symmetries of the problem. So to see why this works out, so this is uh, a small proof. We can look at the matrix element of the commutator between our perturbation Hamiltonian and this Hermitian operator, or the, the octagonal elements of this matrix. And this is equal to zero right from the start because we're assuming that delta H and A hat commute with one another. But we'll try expanding this out and see what we can learn from it. So we've expanded this out. Uh, the commutator is delta H hat times a hat minus a hat delta h hat and not q. So this first term gives us something like this. And the second term over here gives us something like this. A hat acting on N not Q. By definition, this is an eigenstate. So we'll recover the eigenvalue 
epsilon q. We have to leave the other operator in because we don't know what that is. Because a hat is Hermitian, it can act on this bra and it still satisfies the eigenvalue equation. So this will be epsilon p. Okay, and again, this is because this is by definition or by assumption equal to that. And this part is equal to epsilon p and not p. And that this works, this operator can act either on the cat or the bra because it's her mission. These two quantities are the same, so we can factor them out. And we're left with this. And we already know that this expression has to equal to zero. And because we said that the eigenvalues are distinct, so this can't equal to zero. The only way that this whole expression is equal to zero is if this quantity is equal to zero. And what this is, this is the off diagonal matrix elements of our perturbation Hamiltonian. So the interpretation of this result is that delta H is already diagonalized in this basis. Okay, so these are off diagonal elements are zero, so delta H is already diagonalized. And since delta H is diagonalized in this basis, this means that these are already the good states to start from. And we don't need to deal with degenerate perturbation theory. We can just use the first order corrections from, from non-degenerate perturbation theory. <laughs> 